Uh, Stella by Starlight. It's always Stella by Starlight I seem to end up talking about. Why? Well, A, it's a beautiful song, even though it's overplayed. B, it's one of the most difficult, I think, of the uh, beginner tunes, or the sort of standard jam session tunes, which we learn as jazz guitarists. Um, and today I'd like to take you through um, this idea, and uh, I sort of the last video before the last one, so the second second to last video, just talking about ignoring the dominance in chord progressions to get a more, um, really, I think, a, a better sounding approach through changes, or certainly a less cluttered um, version. So I thought I'd do, the, do it for the whole tune. Now I'm going to be basing my thinking here on the real book changes. Um, there's probably going to be some purists going, actually, Stella by Starlight starts with D flat diminished seventh, not an E minor seven flat five. And to those people I say, yes, I hear you, and you get 18 jazz points at least, but bear in mind the fact that actually anything you can play in terms of soloing on the original changes will also work on the real book changes. Um, these changes do for both. And if you listen to the, the recording I did, the guitar playing I just did, you might notice that I've used the real book changes in the first chorus and the original changes in the second chorus. So, ah ha 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 ha. Right, so um, let's start with the first two chords of the song. This is a minor 2 5, E minor 7 flat 5 going to A7 altered. This is um, usually followed by a D minor chord, but not in this particular tune. So in this case, we're going to simply ignore the A7 and play a G minor. And the sound I was using mostly in that uh, version uh, was this beautiful G minor ar arpeggio with an added, added ninth in it. So a normal triad arpeggio just has G, B flat, D, G, B flat, D. But by adding a second into it, you produce a kind of beautiful sound, and there's something about having four notes to play with, because you get interesting notes. That's a juicy note there. Sounds really good, I think. And then you can do the same thing here. And then. Okay. So what I did over those, I played over the first two chords. Uh, it's a minor two five, E, e minor seven flat five, A seven altered. I played G minor. That added two. You could really add anything you want out of the minor scale in there, but I'm using the two there. Um, and then we go, or the nine if you prefer. And then C minor, F seven. And over that I'm using C minor. And then F minor, B flat seven, using F minor over that. Then I get to the E flat major seventh chord. Now for an E flat major seventh chord, do you want to hear the E flat? No, of course we don't. What we want to hear is the G minor triad. And on this, I'm gonna add, you know, a bit of a pentatonic influence to that. So I'm kind of playing G minor pentatonic. Which is a beautiful kind of post bop contemporary sound to play on a minor on a uh, major seventh chord, G minor seven on E flat major. So that's another version of the minor I'm using. And again, I can use any minor, you know. If I was to use a melodic minor, it might be a little bit more outside, you know, but let me see how that sounds. So, Ooh, I kind of like it, you know, it's a bit different, but that's not what I did on the recording anyway. Okay, and then A flat seven, we're gonna play E minor, E flat minor, sorry. B flat on the B flat major, we play D minor with uh, that pentatonic sound. And then the original changes actually go straight G minor, straight to D minor. So, anyway, that works on the E minor 7 flat 5, A7 to D minor. I'm just going to play G minor. And you can also add the natural 7th in there, or the minor major 7th arpeggio if you want a bit more of a melodic minor sound, which I do at a couple of points in that solo. Okay, and then B flat minor. And on the F major, we're gonna play um, A minor. Okay, so I hope you're starting to see what the, what the relationships are here. E minor 7 flat 5, well that's G minor again. Ignore A7, and then A minor 7 flat 5, which is C, mi C minor. Ignore the D7, G7. So we're going to treat, even though it says G7 sharp 5 in the, in the chart, we're going to treat this as being a 2-5. Um, a so we're going to think of that D minor 7 flat 5, and that of course is an inversion of F minor. 
Back into C minor. I'm using a major seventh in that particular version. E minor major seventh there, or just E minor or whatever. You can use the one with the two if you prefer. And again, you've also got the option of using that pentatonic option as well. So don't feel like what you know it's necessarily that difference between the major and minor chords. Use your ears and experiment. The minors are very uh, uh, very flexible. Okay, and then a bit of B flat major, so it's D minor again. Also, be sure to break that up into interesting configurations like this. Yeah. So like lots of leaping around and lots of fourth sounds really good and very jazz for pentatonics. Listen to John Coltrane or McCoy Tyner. Okay, and then we're going to go into um, the last eight. So E minor seven flat five, or the A seven. So that's G minor. D minor seven flat five, F minor. Okay, and on the C minor seven flat five, we're going to play. A um, E flat minor. And we'll resolve straight to B flat. We're not even going to bother about that dominant again. Nobody wants to hear that sound. So that's how I would map Stella by Starlight. Hope that's useful. Thanks for watching.